Hello and welcome to today's installment on using Google Analytics multi-channel attribution tracking. So what is this? Uh, in the past, Google Analytics has been a great tool to, for one, have conversion goals that you track uh, in your site data, but also look at conversion tracking data uh, by channel, direct, referring, organic search, paid search, and so on. But in the last year and a half, uh, year and a half, maybe two years, Google has provided an offering of multi-channel funnels. And what this does is it allows us to see not just the conversions per channel, be it direct, referring, organic, or paid search, but those channels that worked with each other and assisted each other in completing a conversion goal. So we're going to take a, a quick look today at what multi-channel funnels are in Google Analytics and how you can use them to get a better sense or a better feel of what channels are complementing each other. I recently wrote an article for SearchEngineWatch.com called Proving the Value of SEO in 10 Minutes. And yes, that includes basic a basic view of organic search data and how to show how well organic search is converting and contributing to your site's overall revenue, but also looking at multi-channel funnel data to see where the first, first touch of the site happened. Um, instead of just simply looking at last touch tracking, who uh, ultimately gets the credit for the conversion? Where did it start? Did someone come into the site through a <clears throat> paid search ad? left the site and came back a few days later uh, through an organic search, maybe non-branded keyword, uh, and, and see how those channels work together with each other. So from our Google Analytics dashboard, we're going to come down to multi-channel funnels, and we're going to go to the overview, which I'm already here. So we're going to go to the overview section, and we're going to learn that in the last month, we've had 260 conversions. Now, I, I must also mention that two have the ability to use multi-channel funnels or multi-channel uh, attribution tracking in Google Analytics. You have to have goals set up. So, that being said, we have goals set up, and for this last month, we want to see what channels assisted each other in site conversions. In the last month, we've had 260 conversions, but 79 of those were done with the assistance of two, two or more channels. Now from the overview page here, uh, they have a really cool feature. It's a Venn diagram that's the multi-channel conversion visualizer. And before we really dig into the data, it's nice to get this high-level view of different referring site channels that led to conversions, but to see how they overlap. Now, as a quick example, we have paid search here that brought in 33% of the total site conversions, and we have organic search that brought in 42% of overall site conversions. But what's pretty cool is we can look at organic search and paid search working together, assisting each other to complete a site conversion. And we see that's 4% this month uh, of actual site conversions where organic search and paid search work, work together. That could be either they came in through organic search but came back and converted through a paid search ad or vice versa. The next thing we're going to take a look at here is assisted conversions. Now this is how we start digging a little bit deeper into the multi-channel funnels. So we can see here that organic search uh, itself had 78 last interaction conversions. So they got the credit. This is the last point uh, before conversion was made. That visit came through through organic search. But there were 42 assisted conversions here where other channels helped contribute to organic search. Now we can begin to dig down a little deeper and start trying to gain a better understanding of in which sequence did these certain channels help each other out and assist each other in completing these site conversion goals. With this, we head off to the Top Conversion Paths tab. From this screen, we're actually getting a breakout. Now, we're getting a little bit better picture of what happened here 
um, that led to site conversions? Which channels, which channels help each other out? Now keep in mind, we can also look at all conversions, path lengths of two or more or up to 10 plus. So since we're not looking at basic data, I want to look at paths that were two or more. We want to look at the assistances here of these different channels. So what we can see is that nine conversions entered through organic search, but ultimately came back to the site through direct traffic and converted. Now, if before we had multi-channel funnel tracking, we wouldn't have been able to understand this or see this. It would have been simply direct traffic that would have got the credit for these nine conversions, and it would have never been, there would have never been any credit given to organic search. So this is very powerful data that we have uh, the, the ability to look at now and understand just how much organic search uh, gives to the pot and helps out the other channels in um, accruing site conversion goals or transactions. And when I say transactions also, we can look at path link and sort that way. We can also just look at simply AdWords, but we can also break it into certain conversions or just e-commerce transactions if you have e-commerce tracking in place. Another thing we can do once we're here at uh, the basic channel grouping path uh, section is we can add a secondary dimension if we'd like. I can type in keywords and I will get the keyword path. So for instance, I see organic search. They originally came into the site on organic search but came back through a paid ad but I can get a sense and a feel for what was the exact keyword they came in on organic search and what did they come back uh, you know, a day, 10 days later, and what was the term that they typed in paid, paid search that ultimately led to that conversion. Another thing that I like to look at when I'm looking at how organic search helps uh, contribute to uh, these other channels is by simply setting up a filter where I want to say I want to include every basic channel grouping path that begins with organic. And as I stated, if it had begin, begun with organic before in Google Analytics tracking, it would have never gotten the credit that it deserved. So we see here, like I mentioned, we have the nine conversions that began with organic search, but they came back at a different point, uh, a different touch of the site, and they came through direct and there were nine conversions. Another example, six conversions here, where they originally started as an organic search referral, had left the site and came back through paid search. We can also see how many times they're coming through organic, leaving, but then also coming back through again uh, on organic and converting. We have two, two visits here, or two paths that led to six, and then down here you can see there were, there were three organic visits, and that led to uh, two conversions there. Uh, this also shows different assistances where I talked about organic coming back on direct. This is organic and there's three conversions where someone came back to the site multiple times uh, to the direct channel. Now you're going to see variances based on the type of site you have. This is uh, this example here is a site that sells very high-end items so they're not going to make split decisions. They're going to come through organic search. They're going to think about it. They're going to come back probably again through direct a couple more times until they actually convert. So that's kind of uh, an explanation of why you're seeing a, an initial organic visit, but so many direct visits concurring after that. Another thing that you can do with multi-channel funnels in Google Analytics is create additional channel groupings. Now, as an SEO myself, I am primarily concerned with looking at multi-channel tracking and looking at organic search and filtering it that way, just as I just have right there. What I also am concerned with is non-branded referrals. So we know organic search is bringing these visits and they're coming back through direct or they're coming back through paid or they're coming back several times through another channel, but I want to set up a, a channel grouping of branded and non-branded so we can get a better feel for how well non-branded terms are performing. So 
what you can see is here, um, we've already got this set up in my example here but I will hit edit to show you a little bit more about the labels or channels that you can create. We have direct set up, uh, we have referring sites set up, feeds, email. This is, this is a very uh, intricate, intricate uh, label system that we have. You could technically do this cleanly with direct referring paid search organic and then build out your branded and non-branded labels. So looking at brand, Exactly how I set that up was I want to include a keyword that contains whatever your brand uh, company name is, whatever you deem branded search, it's branded search referrals. And I'm going to assign it a color so it's different than the other labels, and I'm going to save that. So now we're going to have a, a, a filter that can find and show what branded terms are leading into... <clears throat> these conversions and assisting other channels. With non-branded, it's exactly the same thing we did for branded, but instead of including that brand keyword, containing that brand keyword, we're excluding it. So we have this set up, and now I'm going to choose to use this. So now you can see that Instead of originally, a little bit ago, we were, we were showing where organic search uh, had nine conversions that came in on organic search and then came back on direct. We can see here that 12 conversions were non-branded terms, and then they came back to direct traffic. So this is a, a, a better, faster, more granular way to look at uh, these channel grouping paths. Now, granted, from what I've shown a little bit ago, Yes, you can simply look at top conversion paths and do a secondary dimension where you look at keywords, but you've got to do a little bit of parsing, parsing there to actually be able to read that data well. With this, it's nice to be able to come through here and see you know, what came through as a non-branded term, but then came back to a branded term. They visited the site, they remembered your company name, and typed that back in a few days later, and look, that led to five conversions there. Additional features of multi-channel tracking are time lag and path link. So this is like what I was talking about with how many people come in you know, today, then they leave the site for tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, come back two days later, or it could be a week later, up to 30 days later, uh, and then, then converted. I personally, I, I love assisted conversions tab, overview tab, top conversion paths, and all the filters and the channel groupings that you can create. Time lag to me and path length to me is basically similar to what I have always gotten out of uh, overall visitor data in Google Analytics. So I'm not extremely impressed at time lag or path length because I think that data has kind of always been there. But I, I really love the ability to look at assisted conversions. And like I said, instead of only being able to see the last touch that typically always gets the credit for the conversion, we have the ability to see the first, truck, first touch of the site um, and the first referring channel, and also the ones in between if there's more than two uh, paths that led to a conversion. So... This is multi-channel attribution tracking in Google Analytics. I hope you found this beneficial. Uh, if you have any other questions, please visit the uh, blog post about this on the Vision Interactive blog site, or also visit the How to Prove SEO in 10 Minutes uh, column that I've written for SearchEngineWatch.com for more information on understanding multi-channel funnels in Google Analytics. Thank you. Thank you.